Power to the people. Sorry, I won't, I won't do that again. In just a few short years, impact investing has morphed from an oddball of investing strategy to a pragmatic mainstream one. I am Skylar James, welcome back to the channel. And today we're taking a quick look at MSCI's ESG rating system. Have you ever wondered if a specific company aligns with your morals and principles? A few simple clicks is now all it takes to settle the debate. Let's look at indexing as a whole and why the ESG score is a must use tool for every morally conscious investor. You already know that the S&P 500 is an index, but maybe you don't know it's maintained by S&P Global. That's who creates the index and makes the decisions about what belongs and what doesn't. MSCI is similar to S&P Global, same sport, different uniform. Besides these big household name indexes, almost every ETF you buy tracks an index too. VOO is an index that tracks the S&P 500. Almost all ETFs track an index of some kind. These ETF issuers kick a little bit of money upstairs to MSCI or S&P Global for maintaining the list of holdings in the index. Other big name indexers you know are NASDAQ and FTSE Russell. These indexes are powerful players. Decisions within these indexes impact all parts of the investing world. Huge sums of money here. Tesla entered the S&P 500 last year, and because that index is weighted by market cap, Tesla was granted a whopping 1.69% of the index on day one. Think about how much money globally is indexed to the S&P 500. It's over 11 trillion bucks. And the Tesla effect, 1.69% of 11 trillion equals 189 billion bucks. That's a $189 billion shakeup, all because a change to the underlying index. So you see the power these indexes can wield, and MSCI is perhaps the most powerful index maker out there. Just recently, the company made waves by changing their emerging markets index to no longer trade the New York listed Alibaba shares and instead opted for Hong Kong listed ones. The switch moves billions of trading dollars out of the US and the result looks something like this, practically speaking. If you and I are big time money managers and our institutional dollars track the MSCI Emerging Markets Index, then we'll all half the Hong Kong Babas in our portfolio going forward. MSCI says, look, we do all the work. You don't have to change anything, but you do have to go along with it because we as money managers track the index. MSCI has influences, I mean indexes. Sorry, Freudian slip there. These indexes are linked to 14.5 trillion global dollars. They're most recognized for their international indexes. Maybe you've heard of ACWI, the All Country World Index. It offers all the world's equities in one package. And their Emerging Markets Index is the gold standard for that equity class. Just like they can influence the flow of money with Alibaba shares, they can do the same with ESG investing. After all, they are the original ESG indexer going all the way back to 1991. 30 years later, there are now 1,500 MSCI ESG indexes. Do you want an ETF with no tobacco companies? There's an index for that. You want an ETF that only comprises companies working towards environmental goals? As set by the United Nations, there's an index for that too. Check out SDG if you're interested in an ETF for that one. Actually, the more I talk through this, the more MSCI is sounding like the iShares. They've got a million of them. They're all interesting. And one of the hardest parts is finding out that they exist in the first place. So look, MSCI understands how to screen companies for various ESG criteria, given their 30 year history in the niche. And Acqui might be their most well-known index. Put those two statements together and MSCI is the pace setter for us ESG investors. 
and on a global market scale to boot. MSCI is also very thoughtful in that they've taken all the ESG research and put that into a clean, easy to use screener for us to use. Are the ETFs in our portfolio as ESG friendly as we hope? Let's start with the old battleship VOO from Vanguard. If nothing else, this is an exercise in scanning the S&P 500 through an ESG lens. And yeah, it looks like we're right in the middle there. Of the S&P 500 holdings, they sit at about the average for an ESG rating. Some leaders in the field, some laggards, but as a whole, average. MSCI also provides insight on carbon emission, board diversity, and what they call social safeguards. So according to this, the S&P 500 is 0.7% tobacco companies. That's two firms. That would be Altria at 0.25% and Philip Morris at 0.42%. Not bad, MSCI, I'm impressed. Let's try another. I just bought iClean. I reviewed it in my renewable energy video. Watch that if you haven't seen it yet. And subscribe to get updates if you like videos like that one. Let's run iClean through and see if I'm getting what I hope for. And there's a lot of ESG leaders in this package. And the holdings skew overall toward the leader direction. Big time green revenues. That's what I was hoping for. These firms still have some work to do in the boardroom and the carbon emissions could be better, but okay, this is insightful. Maybe ETFs aren't your thing. You love the thrill of YOLOing with one company, one mission, one niche. MSCI has a tool for you too. Let's check out BlackRock, which you watch my BlackRock review, you'll know I think they're a great investment because their earnings are derived from annual expense ratios on a 2.7 trillion dollar ETF catalog. Double A rating, way to go BlackRock. Been holding steady as an ESG leader in the eyes of MSCI for five years now. And I also get a very macro look at these specific corners of ESG. Now, not every stock shows up in this database. Recent new listings, Oatly and Roblox, didn't return any results. Neither did my farmland, REIT play, Gladstone land. But nonetheless, these two tools from MSCI empower us, impact investors, with their Wall Street big shot level of knowledge and research and the authority in which to speak about it. As a side note, do you kind of get chills thinking about how MSCI is to indexes, what BlackRock is to ETFs? I'm still thinking about that. Let's take a deep dive into MSCI as an investment opportunity in a future video. In the interim, check out this screener from MSCI. I put a link to it in the video description down below. And please hit that subscribe if you wanna support this channel and you find these kinds of videos provide value to you. Your likes help me steer content to the kinds of videos you find most helpful. Thank you for joining and I'll see you on the next one. Hi guys, thanks for sticking around until the end of the video. Uh, a couple of my recent videos, the ones on uh, carbon ETF and clean energy investing seem to really resonate with you. Uh, if you have a few topics you'd like me to cover, uh, please let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to get an analysis up for you. Um, all right, over and out, thanks for joining. Power to the people. If you want to support this channel and you find Goodbye.